Well, it seems an absolute age since we've been out and uh, made a video, and I, I apologise for that, but it's uh, the weather's not been so good, and uh, we've been into work as well, so... Um, today it started off pouring down with rain, it's now nearly five o'clock in the afternoon, it's uh, only just stopped raining. So we're back down in Palma Nova and we're going to have a little walk along the front. Uh, it actually looks quite dry here. At home it's only stopped raining a few minutes ago. Anyway, let's, let's start on our little walk. It's a bit cold as well. well. First of all, we've got a little apology to Stephen, Stephen Ridgway. Uh, I was chatting to him this morning, he was asking me some questions about the Hotel Hawaii. So if any of you have got any useful comments about that hotel, they're planning to be staying there a little bit later on this year. And he asked if uh, I could start the, the walk near to the Hotel Hawaii. Well, we're actually completely the other side of uh, Palma Nova and we're heading towards it. So it'll be more or less at the end of the video, um, assuming we make it that far. We. Oh. <laughs> Assuming I make it that far. Uh, but if you're desperate to see the end of the video, you can always uh, fast forward. Well, so we're we not just... there yet. No. no, no, not there yet. So we're just starting, and the uh, first thing we notice is uh, well, the sun's actually coming out and the skies are becoming blue. It's been quite cold this week, and uh, we've had some rain, but torrential rain this morning. Uh, when we got up, it was really pouring down. The island does need the water. Um, so I guess uh, from that point of view, it's quite welcome. Notice the Fergus, just going past the Fergus Hotel, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's open, and they've got the clients. I mean, but so um, the Cam Blanc Beach Bar is closed. Now, it would normally be open, I'm sure, but the weather was so awful today, they probably said, forget it, there's no point. Actually, they are open a little bit. But, uh, yeah, not, not really a great day for places like that. But we are starting to see a lot more places opening up now. If you want to know uh, what's open and when it's open, particularly in Palma Nova and in Magaluf, uh, it's uh, Calvia Notice Board's the place to go. You go to Calvi Notice Board, Philip Blackburn is doing an amazing job. I think it must be his full time job actually, in uh, keeping us all up to date with when the hotels are opening. He's got a huge long list of hotels and uh, businesses as well, bars and restaurants when they're all planning to open. But lots of them uh, are already open. Those that are not, generally speaking, end of March and uh, beginning of April, working up towards Easter, is when, uh, when they're going to open. Apologies for the wind. It is a very breezy day as we put the car in the car park and the flags were really blowy. I was hoping we'd be a little bit more sheltered here, but uh, it's windy. And for those tech, techie ones, um, I've been looking at trying to get a, an external microphone for this camera. And because it's a 360 camera that I'm videoing with, um, they don't actually do them, not for this one. So I'm hoping that uh, later on this year, GoPro will bring out Model 2 or whatever it is of this particular camera. And... Uh, they'll have a wireless microphone facility. That's my on my wish list. But uh, at the moment, I can't have a separate microphone to record sound separately and put it to the video. Seems like a deal too far to me. So I hope it's not disturbing you too much. Just looking out to the sea and it looks really calm. It looks really calm because the wind is coming from the north and we are looking sort of in a more south direction so no surf up here but I think if you uh, if you went to the, uh, the north of the island uh, or even the the west coast you might be getting a, a few waves there but uh, just a look back at the beach here beautiful sandy beach we've had a bit of wind a bit of rain and so it's all looking pretty clean and there's Nobody on it. 
It is quite late in the afternoon now, I've just turned five o'clock. And uh, we were at home watching a football match. Prized ourselves away to come out for a little walk. I'm just going to go up the steps, so it's off with the camera. All right, made it to the top of the steps without too much trouble, looking back down on the beach, looking really nice. A little bit of an update on the restrictions and COVID, I know a lot of people are interested in that. And uh, it's all getting a little bit more relaxed here. We don't have to wear masks on the street now. We still have to wear them indoors, but Spanish, uh, Spanish Minister of Health said or suggested last week that they will be going soon. In fact, I think he said very soon. Um, my personal guess is we might save it till just after Easter. Um, as we come up to Easter, we have the processions and in Palma when these processions are on the crowds come out and it is very very crowded so my guess is they may well keep the restrictions in fact they might even bring them in for outdoors on those particular occasions um, they could could do away with it last Thursday they uh, started to remove some of the restrictions that schools have to impose. Um, children still have to wear masks if they're above six. But uh, the main restriction was that uh, yes, they don't they don't have to stay in bubbles anymore. Though I must say my school do. We haven't actually relaxed relaxed that rule yet. And the numbers, when we look, see how it's affected the numbers, they are dropping from the ridiculously high levels that we had a few weeks ago um, to lower levels. They're not anywhere near the lows that we did eventually achieve though. Um, so we've still got some way to go on that. And there are some similar issues with hospital hospitals and uh, we're still getting one or two deaths uh, most days here are the second beach completely deserted this now this beach would normally have lots of people uh, with their volleyball nets out playing volleyball but uh, with the rain that we've had today it doesn't look as though they even made it out so i'm just going to head down some steps so i'm just turning the the video off for a while So a lot of the hotels here uh, in Palmanova and Magaluf are already open or will be opening very shortly and uh, quite a few of the people who are staying in them are actually Spanish pensioners that come over from the mainland which used to be a big thing a few years ago lots of pensioners would come over it was a government sponsored um, holiday and uh, it would fill the hotels here in the winter time and that seemed to have died off but uh, this year we're getting it back again and so a lot of the hotels have got the Spanish in. I'm just coming up near to McDonald's now just up these few steps and you will see that some of these Spanish pensioners that have come over from the mainland they do wear the masks still in the street and we've been walking around what masks have been worn in the streets as well as outside I'm just walking across towards the, the hotel tropico it's funny i don't know it's one that c catches my eye when people make comments um either on on the youtube channel or looking around different places on facebook People are always asking about this hotel and I don't know anything about this or particularly any other hotel for that matter. Um, we live here so we don't stay in the hotels and we don't actually visit them very often anymore. Um, the Hotel Tropico is one that's been asked about a lot over the, the last couple of years and uh, it does look as though 
this year will be the year that it opens. Um, if you watched a video from a few weeks ago, uh, you couldn't actually get to the entrance, but uh, that's all being cut back. And, uh, and now it's, it's looking as though we can actually get to the entrance. Still needs a bit of TLC, all that will come, and the cafeteria will open. As to whether it's a good hotel or a bad hotel, again, I can't actually say. I can only go by comments that people have left elsewhere. And you get, I think for as many good ones, you get as many bad ones um, responses. So I don't know. Uh, it pays your money and you take your choice, I suppose. see how uh, Anita's dressed because um, it's now midwinter as it were, and even some of the people we're going past uh, it's, um, it has been cold and the wind has brought the temperature down that little bit more so as we were walking down to the beach the temperature was about 15 degrees Celsius which for us is really cold and is actually cold for this time of year. Um, well, I don't know, it's probably about right, maybe a few degrees more. So we're expecting the temperature to go up a little in the next few days. And uh, hopefully if the sun comes out, it'll all start to feel that much more as though the season's about to start. What will make a big difference is the end of this month going to cross the road here at the end of this month just like in the UK uh, we changed the hour and uh, the big difference that that will make is that the uh, the evenings will become that much lighter so one of the reasons that uh, we haven't been able to go out and uh, make any videos is that I don't finish work normally till 5 5 30 and by the time I get home and uh, got myself changed, it's uh, starting to go dark. So it's not really practical to go out and uh, go for a walk in places like this in the evening. Uh, most places are closed and it's dark, so it doesn't actually look very inviting. But after the end of this month, um, we'll see that uh, the nights will start to be that little bit lighter and maybe we'll be able to do some walks in the evening. What do you think, darling? Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was nice to go out for a walk and uh, find somewhere for a coffee. Just coming up to the Tourist Information Centre. Not guessing they're doing very much business. But, uh, just to give you an idea how much rain there was. I was, uh, I was, went out this morning in the rain in the car and uh, roads were flooded and uh, just come down to this part of the beach just behind the Chiringo and uh, it's flooded here. And the breeze is picking up again. This is uh, one of our favourite sort of walks because it's fairly flat, very flat, so easy to do the walk. More flooding just coming up on the left hand side. It just gives you an idea how torrential that rain was this morning. Um, and when I looked on the internet it did say storms, thunder and lightning, but that's I didn't actually hear any. Do you hear any thunder or lightning? No. I quite often don't hear it anyway. <laughs> so, Il Chiringo is open. People inside. Uh, probably the best place to be actually. I think I'd be here overlooking the sea. 
And it looks as though the Ayuntamiento have been out. That's the, the town hall with their clippers. And the, the trees here have been nicely trimmed. So that's good to see. But with all the wind and rain we've had, it's a bit of a clean up. So. And they will, they'll be out. I'm, I guess they'll be out tomorrow morning. And uh, all of this promenade where the wind has been blowing down the leaves and branches, all of that will get cleared up later on, either today or tomorrow, I would think. And it will look pristine again. Right in front of us, we have the Globales. It's the Santa Lucia Hotel and uh, lots of uh, comments on that one. People are going to be staying there later on. I was a little bit chuffed last week. Chuffed. Is that a word people will understand? I was, I was happy. <laughs> chuffed. Um, because um, the, uh, the official Hoteles Globales group actually subscribed to our YouTube channel. That's really quite cool, isn't it? And a big thank you to all those people who keep subscribing and have subscribed, sorry, and keep giving us comments. We love the comments. We love the thumbs up, but yeah, we're really happy when we get some new subscribers. And uh, we're over 4,600, so heading towards that 5,000. That'll be like a little milestone, I think. And we get there, we should get there in the next, uh, few weeks I would guess. Uh, several people have said that they're coming out here on holiday and uh, staying in the area and uh, hopefully we will bump into you and uh, we'll be able to say hello so please do stop us please do say hello because we like that. This is the Barbuda Beach Hotel, uh, hotel. <laughs> restaurant. It's one of the places that's going to be opening up very very soon. They've been doing lots of work during the winter time and uh, I think towards the end of this month it will be open. And uh, next to it we have the Diana Beach Bar and uh, I did come out actually a few weeks ago because they were making a lot of noise here and they were doing a lot of work bringing down some new decking. So everything getting ready for the new season. After the Diana Beach Club is the Chinese, the Happy Chinese, which uh, pretty much has been open. It's not very open at the moment, but uh, they are usually open. So I'm going to just walk around the headland now past the Hotel Santa Lucia. boats out in the bay moored and uh, just <laughs> some of the boats uh, not these but some um, are owned by some of the big ones are owned by these Russian oligarchs and one of them uh, had a Ukrainian working on board in El Toro Port Adriano and uh, he tried to scupper the boat uh, he got taken to court. The court, the judge slapped his wrist. He disappeared from the island and he's actually gone off to the Ukraine to fight. So, the boat, I don't think, did actually say anything. It just uh, took on a little bit of water and well, I'm not sure the rest of the story. And this is interesting because we're now at the Santa Lucia. The sunshades are out and the tables are out and that means they're opening very very soon right, so not open yet 
at Santa Lucia is for sure getting ready. So there's all the tables in the dining room. I'm just coming round to the patio area. come to have a drink or sunbathe. I didn't notice they have a, a terrace on the roof for their, I think it's the, they call it the platinum guests. Um, but that, the, you can see the sunbeds as we're walking along and here we can see all the chairs are out and the sunbeds are out. So we were out here a week or two ago and this terrace was empty. So all of these chairs, tables, some beds and umbrellas have all been put out since then. There's always a few boats moored in this bay and uh, Anita is drawing my attention to one that looks as though it's sort of on its side. I might have to get my other camera out and have a closer look. So there we are looking out. There's a, a nice yacht there with two little tenders. But the thing that's drawing our attention at the moment is the thing just to the left. Which looks to me like a boat on its side, partially sunk. Partially submerged, should I say. Tied up against the buoy. But, uh, not a very good angle for us to see. Maybe when the wind changes a little bit we'll get a bit of a better view. Actually just standing in front of the Santa Lucia, but Stephen... Uh, if you can't wait for the, the picture of the Hawaii, there it is right in front. Just across the bay. And just on the side, in big letters, it says Hawaii. And just below, below that then, uh, there's the, the pool down at the bottom there and uh, just panning around. There's some bars along here as well. And then the beach. <laughs> we're going to make our way along the promenade a little bit further. This is the San Matias beach we're going to go to now, just round past the, away, uh, the Santa Lucia. So continuing our walk now just round past the Santa Lucia and uh, every time we walk past the, the Santa Lucia we, we think of Shauna and her mum Claire who are going to be coming here in July and uh, well they're getting ready for you Shauna. We had a nice chat a couple of weeks ago and uh, I'm sure well, I know that Shauna is counting down the days. She sent me a message to tell me how many days it was until she was coming. It's getting closer now. It's getting closer and closer. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you early in July. So this third beach is referred to as the San Matias Beach, Playa San Matias. And just like the other two, it's completely deserted. We've got a little bit of uh, shelter from the breeze at the moment. And uh, while I'm here, and we might catch this on the way back as well, but uh, uh, if you're staying at the Santa Lucia, many people will head across the road to uh, the bars that are there and right in front of us as we're walking along here is a 
just to the side we've got the Santa Lucia, the, oh, the, uh, the sign's been unveiled. Uh, the sign to the Santa Lucia uh, did, was all covered up, I think, last time we came. So this is the car park just in front of the Santa Lucia. And right across the road, two bars. And the one on the left is called the Three Brothers. And those people who've been sending me messages about the bars um, will note that it is open. So uh, it's all ready for you to come. But what is a bit more interesting, perhaps, is that uh, the bar next to it, which is called the Orion Bar, and uh, last time we were here, this bar was, um, was being completely gutted and all of the furniture was piled up on the outside. Well, that pile of furniture is largely gone. There's one upturned table here. Uh, the windows are being whitewashed out. It's a sign that said Orion Bar is gone. At least the bar's there, but the Orion's gone. And uh, if the rumours are right, it's been taken over and uh, they're getting it all refurbished. So it will be open as a bar, hopefully very, very soon. I've got no dates for that. But if you're worried about somewhere to go, you can go to the Three Brothers, which is right next door. And if you're a football match fan, it was Brighton and Liverpool today, and then Man United and Tottenham later on. And then if you're a rugby fan, you've got the Six Nations tomorrow. Uh, Italy, Scotland, and then England, Ireland. I did actually watch the the, uh, the Wales, France game, and uh, commiserations to all the Welsh fans who uh, were expecting to win. Sadly, it was close, but uh, a bit too close, and uh, France won that one. All the shops here are closed at the moment. Not really any point out opening when the weather's been so bad and, uh, and uh, well, there's not that many people here. So as, you, as we're walking along, you will see a lot of people and, and most of them are Spanish. And uh, the Spanish pensioners on their holidays, which is good to get somebody here. And they quite often stop in a, a bar some of the bars will say, well, they'll share a, shall they share a cup of tea between five of them. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they're not renowned for being uh, big spenders. I don't know, Rasputin always amazes me. Um, it's open. And uh, some will say it's the place that never closes. It's open, he's even got his chairs outside. Well, actually, anybody sitting on the chairs outside, I'm not sure about inside. I'm just coming up to the San Matias Beach Hotel. Um, in the past, it's been a favourite of our family. As it's, uh, well, it was, I'm not sure it was going to be, I'm guessing it will be, for the more mature holiday maker. In other words, there were no children. a bit of a problem one particular year I seem to remember and he took the children to to sing there and uh, I think just as we arrived they suddenly realized oh, they don't have children we did. <laughs> but on that particular occasion they made a, a little exception and Anita took about 30 children in her choir to sing on the stage organized by a friend of ours Gaynor who entertains in the hotels and she's doing St. Patrick's Day and we're coming up to yes we're coming up to St. Patrick's Day next week uh, Thursday. for those of you with the Irish in mind so next Thursday is St. Patrick's Day that's a, a work day for most of us and uh, so Santa Ponza which uh, is a day for the is a place for the Irish people to congregate um, it's going to be the centre, so next uh, Sunday, a week tomorrow, um, there'll be a parade, and there'll be some stalls, and uh, hopefully will be a party atmosphere. So if you're on the island next week, then Santa Ponza 
Sunday the 20th, I think it is. It is, yes. It's coming up to CISO. Um, CISO open. All ready to accept the clients and uh, lots of people there. And it really is kind of special place just to be able to sit and overlook the sea. It's one of the places we will stop and uh, have a drink. We now actually have dinner there. It can get very, very crowded if you're planning to have dinner. It's definitely advisable to uh, book your place, reserve a, a table. Children's Park. Not one we usually stop at with our grandchildren, but. Uh, I feel the breeze blowing through there. It's best to get out for a walk than be sitting inside, isn't it? Yeah, we feel as though we've sat inside for two weeks. It's uh, with the, the way the weather's been and uh, nights nice drawing drawn in so not been easy to get out very much so yeah, first walk for a while I had a message from Naz who uh, said how much he was missing Mallorca so hope you'll be back soon Naz I'll have to have a coffee again coming up to the Cantina Sol. I uh, spoke to Jean, who used to own Cantina Sol a few years ago, and uh, hopefully I'll be going to see her soon. But, uh, Cantina Sol at the moment is closed. I think it's nearly time to stop for a drink if we can, darling. Well, let's hope the olive tree's open. <laughs> it's a mess we can of hope. Over there. Seems to be a lot of um, a lot of work going on across the way. It's like a boardwalk at the end of the beach. It takes you to the Hawaii, and uh, it's all sheeting out there. So I think there's. Looks like there's some work going on. It says we are open. So the olive tree says we are open. Shall we, shall we have a look to see if it's true? I can see people inside. Farm to table. I'm sure, you can't eat everything there. <laughs> so we've got uh, a few little herbs here. So uh, let's go, go on the garden. And uh, welcome. There are some people inside. Can you cope with sitting outside? Do you think? No. <laughs> no, she says. <laughs> Well, there's the olive tree that the, the bar takes its name from. And if you come here, it's just lovely at any time of the day to sit here and just watch the, watch the boats, watch the people walk by and watch the people on the beach. We quite like it in the evening time. Some music now, just to confuse me. We're sitting here at the olive tree in Palmanova, just having a drink and just sitting overlooking the, the water and just looking towards where we live and we can almost see our house. If we, uh, we zoom in, the monument on the top of the hill there is Nabagesa. And our little two-year-old grandchildren can say Nabagesa. There it is on the top of the hill. And we live just beyond, below that in Kenova. So where the houses are down there, we're in uh, just the other side of that hill, I think. Thank you. 
Well, we managed to find a, a drink at the olive tree, so cheers. And this has got a red wine, typical. Cheers. I've got my shandy, that'll keep me going for a little while. And just to let you know, this red wine is called Ruby, and it's really nice. It's a local wine, and I went to Soyer last night, and they sell it there as well. It's really nice. <laughs> they sell it in other places as well. Obviously. So, cheers. cheers. I just had a, a nice drink at the olive tree and Anita met Emmanuel who's from uh, Florence he's from Florence and he's uh, he's a musician and uh, interested in Anita and uh, piano and while, while we were there I was having a little email chat with uh, Stephen who's coming over to the Hawaii Hotel. The Hawaii Hotel is actually right in front of us and it looks too nice at the moment because there's a lot of work going on in the uh, in the bars and restaurants below it. We'll have a little walk all the way towards the Hawaii because uh, Stephen's particularly keen to have a look to see what it's like. But you've got this wonderful beach, fantastic beach, the San Matias beach, lovely sandy beach, nice clear waters for swimming. If you fancy some diving, they do diving from here, you can get yourself a Wetsuit. An aqualung and a wetsuit and go go underwater. Someone was asking me about the Tobago as well. Tobago is right in front, uh, up the hill a bit there. And we've got the Commodoro to the right here. Seems we're a little bit sheltered now from the breeze. It's uh, not too bad. When you get to the end of the promenade here, um, it sort of extends towards the Hawaii on a, a wooden boardwalk. So at some point they've painted it white since we were last here. <laughs> it's a bit more solid as well. There's just some gentle ripples, considering how windy it was earlier on. No waves here. Blue bar up above, uh, not open at the moment. And then all the bars down here at the bottom they have all been and are still being worked on because there's a lot of work going on this one. We've got scaffolding here. I wouldn't believe that a few hours ago there was torrential rain. Seriously torrential rain. Just shows how quickly the weather changes. Yeah. And uh, I read the weather forecast and it said five o'clock, six o'clock, clear blue skies. And what have we got? Clear blue skies. A lot of work going on here though. A lot of work. So this won't be here when you come, Stephen, don't panic. Had better days. Might be a little bit surprising. I think the whole steps up to the Hawaii. Some people going up there. So this uh, this is like one of the pools you've got here. And again, <laughs> the pool will be cleaned before you arrive. It's not actually looking too bad.
Oh, there's some steps up there that go up to the side of the Hawaii. So right in front of us is the Alua Hawaii. Not open, so I can't go in. Uh, you can see down at the bottom the, the windows are whitewashed out. I'm not sure about the exact dates, but on Calvi Notice Board, I'm sure they'll have the dates that uh, the Hawaii is opening up. And here's the, the bar, and all on here there'll be beds. Places look very different in the winter time. Interesting to compare the, what it looks like when you arrive, Stephen. This is just about as far as you can walk without getting your feet wet. There's a little tiny pebbly beach down here. the sea. Lovely, crystal clear. Are they sea urchins? Sea urchins, yeah. Good for snorkeling, if you like snorkeling. In the summer, this is what looks like a little play area for the children is where all water gets squirted so it's a very wet area so all of these things will be squirting water and I'm sure it's lots of fun I wouldn't walk where I'm walking now I'd get a bit wet so all of this down here all of this is part of the Alua Hawaii Hotel and some of the rooms here and then some further up and behind so i hope stephen that's helped you to uh, get a fix on where you're going to be staying i'm sure you're going to be having a great time i can hear the motor running actually on the on the swimming pool so they they uh, they must be pumping it to to clean it up so I thought it looked quite clear. I mean, sometimes in the winter time it can look really green, um, but um, the pumps are on, and yes, I can see water actually being pumped in the swimming pool. So that'll be absolutely crystal clear by the time uh, the hotel opens. And then some steps there that will take you up onto the top road, which is where the hotel is. Well, I need to, as always, spotting the um, spot, spotting the wild freesias. There we go. Smell them. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, walking straight into the sunshine now. I bet you're glad I told you to put your sunglasses on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As we were coming out of the house, the rain has just stopped. The sky was still grey. And she says, do you think I should take my sunglasses? And I did, and I'm glad. <laughs> it's really quite bright. I wear my hat. Right, we're just gonna head back pretty much the way we've come. So I'm gonna turn the camera off for the moment and uh, I'll put it on 
a bit later on as we uh, head back towards the car which is at the other end of Marmanova. So we've, uh, we've walked down as far now as the Santa Lucia and rather than taking the road or the promenade uh, we're taking the road which is just behind the promenade. Um, looks a bit sad at the moment because uh, places are not open. Um, it'll be interesting to see what it's like in two or three weeks time. But uh, one of the reasons for coming this way is because I'm always being told to by Jim, Jim McDonald. Um, he always likes to see what's going on along this particular part because I think he probably pops into one or two of the bars along here. And uh, the good news is that they are, they're not opening up now, they'll be opening up soon. So this is um, Lady Di's, Lady Diana's, always a very popular bar with the uh, the expats and the the Brits who come over. And then the one which will open first I think is the, the beach bar, which uh, we've already been past as we walked along the promenade, but uh, you can see across the road. Uh, access there to the Diana Beach Bar. Again, Calvin Notice Board is a place to go to to find out when all of these places are open. Uh, Philip Blackburn is doing a marvellous job uh, keeping everybody informed about opening. Little supermarket there, near to the Hotel Santa Lucia. And then last time we came, we actually went into this park with Luna was uh, playing on some of the things here. That's something that's been built, completed, finished off during the lockdown. There was a park there before but it's uh, had uh, a lot of work done on it. Just across the road we've got Gelatius. It's a place we've yet to go to, we've not actually been there. And uh, Next to that, open, Gelatius is open, as is Taylor's Cocktail Bar, and uh, both of them actually looking quite busy. Across the road, Jim's always asking me about this, he must be a little bit of a singer because it's a karaoke bar. This is Monroe's, not open at the moment, but the good news is, come the end of the month or beginning of April, it will be open, so Jim, you're in luck. Taylor's is there though, open already. And some of the other bars that Jim always mentions to me, I don't actually know. So forgive me if I walk past and forget to mention one for you. the Hollywood Kebab House and uh, they've been open for much of the time. I guess they do a lot of takeaways as well and takeaways have become quite popular here with the residents so we do have the motorcycle delivery teams. Across the road we've got the Calablanca with its um, multi-coloured entrance. Uh, <laughs> some people have said how much they like it and some others have said how much they think it looks a bit strange. And right here we've got a tandoori. Anita and I both really like Indian food and there's one we've not been to so one. must be on our list of to-dos. Right next to that Bertarelli's properties. We've uh, known the Bertarelli family forever, 30 plus years. So, good luck to them, that's fairly new. The fish bar is open, people having their nails done. Oh, one or two more bars just behind here. Uh, a little pathway and 
this one's closed at the moment. Rumbos. And uh, if you needed a COVID test, PCR test, which most people don't need anymore. And now we've just got a test centre there, not open at the moment. Bora Bora. And this pub that's open. Fergus Hotels here, the Bermudas. Not open, but that one would be opening later on. So we've been doing a bit of work there. Cross over here. And there are some more hotels which we perhaps need on a different occasion to, to go up and have a look at that different part of Parmanova and perhaps head up into Torranova as well. I'll have to leave that to another time. My legs are hurting now. Across the road we've got castaways. I need to go and into castaways, I need to go there. It's been run by an ex-pupil of mine, Oliver, Oliver Hyam. So he's open, busy, right next to El Tano, which is an Italian restaurant which I really like it. Um uh, he likes El Tano, it's one featured in uh, one of our previous videos here. It's the only place open, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, sometimes we find it difficult to find somewhere to, to get something to eat in the winter time, but uh, El Tano is one that's been open for much of the time. Oh, I'm pretty sure that used to be El Tano up there. It's now a Madras Indian restaurant. So we've got another one. Oh, we've got several to go at that uh, we didn't know about. come all the way to Spain and have an Indian. We went all the way to Rome and had an Indian. <laughs> we did, we went, <laughs> we went to Rome, we went to see the Colosseum and some of the things in Rome, fantastic. And on the way back to our hotel we stopped off and had an Indian curry in Rome. I think we probably did have some pasta and, and well when we were in Naples that's where we have the, the pizza. Because that's where pizza comes from. Right, we're going to head back towards the car and uh, looking just through the trees there to see the, the sun on the Playa de Palma in the distance. It really does look pretty. And it's just nice to see the places kind of alive now. More bars are open than the last time we were here. Showing the football, showing the rugby. I guess we should be at home now watching England play the rugby, but uh, we're not. And what's more, it's good to see other people out walking along the promenade. So the hotel across the road just above the Dolphin is the Mallorca Census Hotel four star again I've never stayed there but I have actually been up into the, the foyer and spoken to people who have stayed there and they say what a nice hotel it is and I would expect that because uh, a friend of ours is the manager there on the so uh, another nice hotel I don't think that's open yet but we'll be opening up soon and it will be on Philip Blackburn's list. And now we've got the promenade almost to ourselves. It's just coming up to quarter to seven. 6.45 and there's a pharmacy across the road and look at the pharmacies because they have signs which have thermometers so give you an idea of what the temperature is 
displays it. I would say about 14. Yeah, I don't think it's changed much from earlier on when I, it, was, it was 15 when we arrived. We've got no wind here, so it doesn't feel so, so cold. Still water to evaporate or disappear from the promenade there. Did tipple down this morning. Even some of the shops open, so it's not bad for the time. Eighteen forty two, according to the clock. And it's fourteen degrees Celsius. <laughs> I win. Uh, <laughs> you win. It's gone down one degree since we started. But 14 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees Celsius for me is a poor, perfect temperature to have a walk. So, really nice. Yes, You're very good, darling. <laughs> it's one of the things I do with my children at school. I, uh, I bring out a thermometer and ask them what the temperature is. It's quite, it's quite funny sometimes what some of them say. In your classroom? Well, wherever I am, yeah, wherever we are. So, what's the temperature of this room is now? And then some will say, oh, it's oh, 35 degrees. Maybe in the summer it might get <laughs> somewhere like that. But, uh, at the moment, it's around about 20 or so uh, in the classrooms, which is quite comfortable, 20, 22. In the classrooms at school, uh, we, we have to have the windows open all the time. So, on a cold day, it can get very cold. Which in other parts of the country, I mean, in Mallorca, doesn't get particularly cold, but if you think about some of the mountainous areas in, in Mallorca, if the schools have got to have their windows open all day, it can be freezing in them. It can't work when it's that cold. Just coming up to McDonald's gym. McDonald's <laughs> gym? Well, I say that because Jim McDonald always <laughs> comments <laughs> always comments on uh, on uh, on the videos and uh, and uh, he, he often reminds me that he too is a McDonald though I don't think he's associated with this McDonald yes much better across the road and over Itapa and uh, when that reopens we'll be going there for our tapas and uh, we'll be showing you what we eat. For tonight we're going home. Oh, the, the Chinese up at the top there is open. I seem to remember one day we were walking along here and we saw the Chinese open. We were so tempted by the time we got home we ordered a takeaway, didn't we? No need to do that tonight because Anita made a Thai curry. A Thai curry, so uh, a, a bottle of wine tonight. waiting for us we have <laughs> a Thai curry. I'll switch the video off quickly because Andrew's here. Oh. Nice to bump into Andrew, he's uh, a fellow teacher. And he's uh, having a little walk here in Palmanova and it just does feel a little bit more buzzy, don't you think? Yeah, it's more people around. And the sun's going down now, so it's uh, it's getting dark a little bit. So you'll find as it gets towards seven o'clock, it's ten to seven now. Some of the places will be opening up for for the evening meals. And, yeah, this is the supermarket across the road, which used to be the taboo restaurant, is now the taboo mall. The meters ask you to go across the road to a supermarket. Dear me.
so this wasn't open last time we came. Looks like it'll be popular with the tourists and people will be coming to buy their gifts to take home. So that one is new and then uh, the one that next to it, both of these places used to be restaurants. Uh, this one used to be a Chinese restaurant and this one's now the Acme supermarket. So that one's more about gifts, this one's more about sweets and drinks and snacks. Alcohol. And right across the road we've got the beach. Very calm sea. happening here because there's a when we arrived there was a police car in the middle of the road and now there's a police car stopping cars going down there and it's coming up to the Colmena which is the, the beehive where we normally stop to have a drink so all the cars that are going down here, or should be going down here, are being diverted. They're allowed to come up. The cars are coming up, but uh, this side's closed, so something going on a little bit further down. Oh, a taxi's going to be allowed through because there's a taxi rank down there. So the Colmena, which is the beehive, which is where we usually have a, a drink. Sometimes we'll stop off here and have, uh, have a meal as well. And bring the grandchildren. Just at the top of this little road we've got the Golf Fantasia. Taxis are allowed down there but uh, cars... Oh Anita's done a 10,000. Cars have to take a little detour. So it'll be interesting to see what's going on down here. You can see now this is another Il Chiringo, which is the one that's on the beach. Which is the one that's not on the beach. By one of our parents at school. Just here is Portacol, which and by Max is not open yet. We open up soon, I guess. And then we've got the American Dino, which does the burgers. Rossini, Thai Beach. It's all looking really as though it's coming to life. It's early now, so people will just be going out for dinner. Hello. Saffron, another of the Indian restaurants along here. And then my tapas is um, getting ready to open up, so that'll be one of the places for us to go later on. In the season when they're open. Oh, and next to my tapas is Tutti Frutti, which is a, a favourite of our grandchildren. We stopped off there for a nice meal. But not today, not today. I'll have to try that on another day. So, what's going on along here? coming up to the Fergus style hotel but there's more police down here and uh, a street cleaner wondering if there's something going on on Sunday that we don't know about one of the issues that I have is that it's not easy to find out what's happening if there's an event going on if there's a street market or a, a race road race, a cycling race, a running race, a marathon. Um, <clears throat> having the street cleaners out here looks as though something's going to be happening. It's 
places open here. So we're, we're bumping into people and uh, we've just come to No Stress, which is the Prosecco bar, which is where the party is to live. We've just met, bumped into some more people and we've just come across another Il Tano. So this is the same place, it's a bit further behind. And then Mai Tai, we'll be coming to Mai Tai and guessing in the next week or two. Um, which is where we have a, a Thai curry, but we're going to have a Thai curry at home tonight. And I've just been told that there was a spillage here, and so that's why everything's been uh, diverted, the cars have been diverted, the cleaners have come out because something's been spilled on the road and they've just got to tidy it all up. Right. Well, usually we finish the video back where we started, which was where the heart is. Um, but there's a bit of spillage and uh, we're not going to cross the road. So we're just outside Mai Tai. Um, we're not going to Mai Tai, we're going to go home for our Thai curry at home. Our Thai. Our Thai. <laughs> <laughs> home Thai. It'll be a home Thai tonight. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in our next video. So bye for now. Thank you. Just to point out this lovely tree here, this is an angel's trumpet and it might be a flower when we come again. That's these amazing yellow flowers on it. Okay, bye. <laughs>